Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's 8.30, so I think uh, we'll start the presentations now since we're having two presentations in first period. I'd like to welcome all you all to the 2021 Capstone presentations. Um, this year, we have a total of five presentations that we'll be going over um, this week. The first two presentations are this morning. Um, this is going to be a representation of the students' individual study that they've done over the year, and I think you'll be very excited and interested in what they have to say. The presentations are about 20 minutes long, and then afterwards we'll have 10 to 15 minutes for questions. I will be moderating the questions, so if you would please raise your hand on the Google Meet on the bottom of bar. If you have a question, I will do my best to call on you. Um, the presentations are being recorded, so if someone does not have an opportunity to watch a student presentation, I'll make sure we put that on the Rainy School website so they'll have access to that in the future. That being said, our first presentation for today will be by Claire Haas, and it'll be on St. Bart Fire, the process uh, and product of writing a feature length script. So Claire, I will pass this on to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, can everybody see the, the slide right now? Hello? We're good, yeah. very good. Okay. Very good. Okay, so my um, capstone is called St. Bart's Fire. It was a screenplay that I wrote, and I also have a paper, The Process and Product of Writing a Feature-Length Script. So I wanna begin with what is a screenplay, because uh, screenwriting and screenplays are pretty unfamiliar to uh, the general public. So screenplay is the blueprint written by screenwriters for a film, television show, or a video game, but we're gonna be focusing on film and television for right now. Um, it includes the, the parts of a screenplay on the page include action, dialogue, extensions, transitions, parentheticals, and slug lines. So off to the side, you can see a page from Grey's Anatomy, which points out each of these each of these parts of the script, and I'll show it up close in the next slide. So here you can see Meredith is the character, and then you have her dialogue below. Um, and I should point out that at the top, fade in, the first words under teaser are the transition. And that just shows um, how the, the page is, or how the, the screen is changing when it's on the screen. Now, a slug line is the more confusing part, I guess, because it says, Int Meredith's living room sunrise. So int or ext is interior or exterior. Meredith's living room is where you are and sunrise is the time of day. Then you have a parenthetical also no known as an extension, which is off screen for Derek, which is OS next to his name. Um, another one could be voiceover, but off screen would just refer to if he was in a different room speaking, voiceover would be say maybe the thoughts of the character where they're not necessarily speaking, but it's still being translated and spoken on the page or on the screen. And then below that you have action, which tells you who is there, what they're doing, um, what is around them and the action that is going on, either the character is doing it or something that is going on in their environment. So next I have two scripts I have to the side is from Mean Girls, and that's the script that I will be comparing to my own. Um, and then to the right, I have a couple of snippets from my script, uh, St. Bart's Fire. So on the left, you have fade in the transition, the slug line in Katie's room early morning, um, followed by action, followed by Katie the character. Groggy is a new type of parenthetical that wasn't on the previous page. Um, right below her and you would typically use that as direction to the actor and typically you don't want to use that too often because this is the blueprint so the actors should be able to act out their lines in a way that they think is, is best for the character rather than being told how to do it um, by the writer. And then if you go down the page a little bit further you see chip OS, chip off screen, I like to call those extensions, but you could also call them parentheticals. To the right, um, at the top, I have fade in, the transition, exterior, St. Bart school day, um, the slug line, and then 
the action below that. And in the snippet below, I have Wythe continued confidently. So continued is the um, extension, which shows that she's speaking twice. There may have been a pause or a break. And then confidently is how she's saying it and then her dialogue. So this is my process of writing. This isn't everybody's process, um, but I just wanted to begin with how I started thinking about my topic. So for me, my first step was the environment. I was really intrigued by the location and the place. Um, so I think that it's important to find and understand where your characters are. Not everybody starts from this place, but for me, this is how I started my script. So I started with a boarding school and below I have a picture of one. And I thought that that was an intriguing environment, especially since I went to boarding school and I wanted to draw from my own experiences. Um, and I wanted to see how people would interact and, and go about life, especially in a circumstance like in my screenplay, there's a sexual assault and I want to see how they react and how they treat what happens. To the right, I have two images, one from the newsroom, which was written by Aaron Sorkin. And I remember him saying that he drew from uh, the environment of actually watching sports news while he was writing. And he thought, oh, that's an interesting environment. I think that I wanna write something set there. So I thought that was similar to how I developed my idea. So I wanted to put that off to the side. And then below that, I have an image of uh, the Cree planet in Captain Marvel. And that's just to show you that it can be anywhere from a boarding school to a newsroom to a, an alien planet. Below that, I have my character outline, which is my second step where I try to develop characters. This is typically about nine pages long of understanding my character and understanding where they're from. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was with this, I wrote Zora's race as black rather than African-American because she's of African descent. So I didn't, th I think that was the best way to specify. Um, and I thought that that was the best way to do that because she isn't African-American, she's African. Um, so I'll show you the full character chart here where these are all of the questions that I'll answer. And as I said, it, it was about nine pages of um, questions and answers for my character and for each character. My third step is story mapping, and this is understanding plot for me. Um, it contains a short description of the script. So that would be a log line, which I'll explain in the next um, few slides. A list of characters, questions, how, uh, questions of how the main character will change or stay stagnant and who will influence or influence them. And that brings in the influence character versus the main character. So it's important in the script to have either your main character will be influenced or will influence another character. And that has to do with your influence versus your main and that will change how the story works. Um, following that, I have the description of Act 1, which is establishing the world, the status quo, what you're going to expect. And in establishing the world, you'll typically have one character, whether they are the main character, the influence character, or another character who will be new to the world, who will ask all the questions of the audience so that you can understand how this world works. In the description of Act 2, you usually have your world turned upside down. Whatever the main character is trying to keep in place or is trying to stop from happening will happen at that point and the journey will be set on course. And then the description of Act 3 is the final battle, the climax and resolution, which is the duel between the main, the main character and the antagonist. Um, the most exciting moment, and then the resolution, what happens in the end. And then at the end, I have any additional questions or concerns that I may have about my story before I actually start writing in screenplay format. So about my project, I have several themes of sexism, racism, classism, and social and economic manipulation. By social and economic manipulation, I wanted to specify that in every situation, um, somebody in my script is trying to get something from somebody else and that person is trying to do the same. And that doesn't necessarily have to be something malicious, like they're trying to get information to use it against them. It could be anything from 
a conversation. Maybe somebody's trying to get reassurance or somebody's trying to get friendship. Um, and it kind of is a realization that we're all looking for something from somebody else whenever we have an interaction, whether it's positive, negative, or just for, uh, for human nature's sake. Um, the setting is New England, a New England boarding school called St. Bart School, St. Bartholomew School. And my log line is, in an elite New England boarding school, students must decide whether they will stick by an institution which protects the assailant involved in a sexual assault or rebel against all they've been taught to trust and follow. So a log line is your summary of your story. It's your one to two sentences that will tell you who the story is about, what is happening in the story, their obstacles, what they're facing. Um, and typically if you're going through Netflix, let's say, and you click on a film, you'll read something like a log line in order to know if you wanna watch it. Some people will begin with a log line to get their idea and other people will develop it later. I developed it later, but I found that it helped me be a lot more concise um, because I got really caught up in the nitty gritty of my story um, rather than looking at the big picture. And it definitely helps with the big picture. So next I wanna talk about three act structure. Um, and I wanna talk about kind of after that, whether three act structure is actually reliable and if it's uh, something that can be resonant with every film. So I'm comparing Mean Girls for to show three act structure. Um, so in act one of Mean Girls, you have the setup of the world, which is Katie arrives at her first day of high school. She meets Janice and Damien who break down the different cliques in school and specify the significance of the plastics. So Katie is your character who's introduced to this world. Um, she's new to it. She asks all the audience's questions and then she is immediately thrown into this world, sees the cliques in the high school and then um, can then specify the significance of the plastics who are the main antagonists. So the inciting incident is the plastics invite Katie to sit with them during lunch. So that sets, the inciting incident is the part where it either is the first warning sign that the story is going to start or it's the start of the story and it happens about 15 minutes in and it'll lead up to the act one climax which will turn the world upside down. And the act one climax is Regina George betrays Katie by kissing Aaron, Katie's love interest in front of her and Katie vows revenge. So now Katie has seen the warning signs from Jan Janice and Damien and she's going to take those warning signs and she realizes that Regina isn't nice like she thought she was um, and she's gonna vow revenge. So then the story is set on course. So in the second act, the second act is typically split into two parts, each 30 minutes. Um, I should also say the first act is about 30 minutes and the third act is about 30 minutes. Second act, an hour, each half is 30 minutes. So in the first part, you'll have an ascending action. There doesn't necessarily have to be two obstacles. There could be five obstacles. There could be one. It, it can vary very much. But if the ascending action is a positive one where the protagonist is doing well and is successful, then once you reach the midpoint, the midpoint will usually be a low for them. Then part of act two will go downhill. Or the ascending action Neg there will be an uphill where it'll go positively for the protagonist and then once you hit crisis and disaster it'll go down to the low point again but right now we're just gonna be talking about the part one of act two so in act two part one uh katie hatches a plan with janice and damien to take down the plastics and, and although regina seems successful in keeping her hold on the school in the beginning Beginning, Katie decides to try to turn Gretchen against her and in the midpoint she successfully does. So Katie's kind of failing. She's not um, she's not able to take down Regina for the first half and then in the midpoint she successfully um, gets Gretchen to turn on Regina. So now since it was kind of negative for Katie and the midpoint was positive, you'll see that there will be um, a positive lift and then a drop in the second half of act two. So in the buildup, um, Katie overthrows Regina and she is now the head of the plastic. She is the number one in the school. That's her positive point. But then in crisis and disaster, um, they realize that she's truly turned 
plastic and her innocence and good nature are gone and she loses Janice and Damien as friends. And then in the act two climax, which is the lowest point, um, this is the all is lost moment. Uh, Regina realizes that she has been sabotaged and she turns in the burn book framing Katie. So in the third act, you finish act two at the lowest point you can possibly be. And then you have the climax and resolution. So the climax will be the duel, the final battle between the two forces, in this case, Katie and Regina, um, and then the resolution. So with the climax, you have Katie pushes Regina in front of a bus and the resolution, um, Regina survives and Katie sees the toxicity she and the plastics have created and she promotes a positive atmosphere by giving everyone a piece of her prom queen tiara. Um, so that's pretty much the whole like wrapped up mean girls in a bow story structure and it does follow three act structure. Um, but it's important to remember that there has been talk about whether films, all films follow this. And here are some examples. So there's a question on whether these follow three act structure. Pulp Fiction is probably the most famous. It begins at the climax um, and then you kind of go back and forth. So in a way it's very chopped up um, and the, you might start with a climax and then go to a midpoint and then go to the status quo and then go to the rising action. Um, and each of these films are all kind of very similar. For instance, The Hours has three storylines ranging in 80 years and um, they're all interacting in a way that's interconnected where their decisions uh, promote another another's decisions. Um, the Social Network goes between Mark Zuckerberg building Facebook and promoting it and then being in a lawsuit against those who claim that he stole their idea. So I think the debate over three act structure for this is um, some someone like Sid Field, who's a, a, a famous um, advocate for for three act structure. Um, and well, he's dead now, so he was a famous advocate. He would say that all films follow it. And even if they're chopped up like Pulp Fiction, um, they still follow three act structure because they still have all of the components. But I also there are other people that would say they don't because you have to go chronologically from beginning, middle to end in order to truly have three act structure. So there is there is a debate over that. And I don't have an exact answer of yes or no, because it's an ongoing debate. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that there are different ways of filmmaking and there are different ways of telling a story. And you can make that decision yourself of whether you think it follows the specific structure, it doesn't, or it's just in a different order. And that's something to think about the next time you see a film. So I want to talk about where I'm gonna go from here. Um, my story is basically I have um, John, he is the uh, kind of antagonist. He commits a sexual assault against a girl, Natalie. Um, and then blames another student, Elijah, and it prompts a lot of activism on campus um, from different students, Raj, Zora. I have a lot of characters, basically. So I want to narrow down my characters because right now I have upwards of 50 or more characters and I need to find a specific couple that are very important and even kind of a main or a few main protagonists. Um, once I find those, I want to develop more important characters throughout the story and I want to develop um, those important characters, their traits further so that they can become more human, more three-dimensional. And I want to change the resolution because I'm kind of unhappy with it as is. Um, I think Elijah, who is blamed for the assault, he kind of dies mysteriously in the end. And I think that that takes the power out of the story and that allows the villain or, or the antagonist uh, John and his family to win because they're not they they're not able to have that final battle um, and it it doesn't give the viewers uh, Elijah's point of view and it doesn't give the viewers the ability to see his perspective and see him actually um, rise to the occasion and fight John. 
And I want to expand this into a longer format for television. I think that there's a lot of material. I think that it's a lot that can span longer than two hours. And that's something to consider about a feature length film is it's only an hour and a half to two hours. Whereas in a television form format, you'll have five or 10 hours, um, depending on whether you have 30 minutes or 10 hour long episodes. And that's a lot more material that you can expand on. So that's what I would like to do from here. And I think just to conclude my presentation, I want to mention how rewarding this process was. Um, I really recommend it to anybody who is uh, rising to be a senior. I think it the the deadlines were definitely a challenge at times, but they were something that kept me in line. And um, I'm really proud to have this uh, paper and the screenplay completed. It's something that I can say that I did, um, and I'm very happy about that. Okay, Claire, congratulations. That was a f fantastic presentation. Um, right now, if you would so kindly um, stop your pre presentation, Claire, so that way I can see the audience and uh, see who may have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I am actually going to start off with my question. Uh, it's kind of a two-parter. The first is um, you talked about a lot of the components. You compared to a lot of different um, screenplays and movies. I'd like to know where your script falls into the different genres that are out there. But I'd also like to know um, what was the most frustrating part of the writing process? I've read a lot of your scripts. We've seen the changes. What do you think the most frustrating part was? OK, so for the first question, um, genre, I would definitely say it kind of falls into the dramedy category. Um, it's a little bit more drama, but I like to have some lighter parts that have a comedic element, um, just because if you can kind of have some brevity uh, in in life when it's when it's hard, I think that that's important to have, um, especially in the script. Talking about the writing process, um, so the question was the most difficult part. I would say, so after my story map, I started to write in screenplay format. And that's when I really started to get very uh, detailed. And I would get into the moment and I would be in it. And I would think about every detail, every look, every change. Um, and I almost became too... Uh, too detail oriented and looking on a, on a very microscopic level where it got to some places where I couldn't really see the whole picture and I couldn't see where the story was going to go. So I think it was hard for me at that point to kind of look back and say, okay, this is where I want to go in this second act. This is where I want to go in the resolution. Um, and that probably comes from the fact that I am a character oriented writer and some people are plot oriented, some people are character oriented, but I usually write from the standpoints of my characters rather than what they're going to do. Um, but then I think actually writing my log line helped me uh, get out of that funk a little bit. Great, thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Let's see, um, Devin. Hey Claire, uh, great presentation. So I just had a question about uh, what is the difference between a slug line and a log line? So that's a really good question. Um, a slug line is telling you where um, the characters are, where the location is. I understand they, they sound very similar. Um, so it's int, uh, location, time of day, whether you're inside or outside, where you are and what time of day it is. It just kind of gives you the setting. And then a log line is the uh, short description or summary of your plot from um, your protagonist, where you are, your setting, and the obstacles that they will face. Great. Let's see. Next, um, Brooke, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, great job, Claire. Um, but I was wondering, what is the best way to kind of turn the world upside down, as you said, and transition from that first act to the second act? That's also a really good question. Um, I think what you should do is just think, what is my character trying to prevent? What are What is their biggest fear? What is the worst thing that can happen to them in this world right now? And then make that happen to them. 
and then see how they recover from that. Like, don't be afraid to throw them into the worst possible case. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Jaren, do you have a question? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned like some of the big difficulties with writing something like this. So what, like, what was your big inspiration to tackle a huge project like writing a full story like this? Um, great. So I went to boarding school my freshman year. And while I was there, I noticed that it was uh, kind of a strange environment because they were just recovering from a sexual assault scandal that took place on campus a couple years earlier. And I thought that that whole um, ecosystem where the administration was very protective and very defensive all the time, and then having kind of this world of students from a lot of different backgrounds thrown into one place and then kind of having to interact and interact under um, a, a place where the school was so protective and so defensive and um, so worried about any sort of infraction at all. I thought that that was something very interesting that I had an experience and I wanted to draw from my own experience and also what happened a couple of years earlier and then make this work of fiction out of it. Okay, great. Um, do we have any other questions that we'd like to ask Claire about the writing process or about her screenplay? Well, I'm gonna throw in a question again. So Claire, if you had an opportunity to go back to the beginning of the year and do anything different in this process, what might that be? Um, I think I would probably try to look at a bigger picture at first. I think I did jump into, um, I, I developed my characters, which was important. That's what I did first. But I think I jumped into what's going to be the first scene? What's going to be this scene here? And I didn't think a lot about kind of the flow of it, um, which I think was a big reason why I struggled with the resolution and I struggled with narrowing down characters in the beginning. So I think looking at the the bigger picture from the start and forcing myself to see that would have would have helped. Okay, great. Um, any other questions from you guys? Uh, Mr. Di Giovanni. Hey, Claire. Very well done. Congratulations. Uh, had, did you think at all during the process about casting and who you might want to put in some of the roles that you had uh, defined here? Yeah, um, I actually, I couldn't find a lot of actors that were really in my mind. I think the one person I can say was, I don't know if any of you have seen the show This Is Us on NBC, um, but the girl Rachel Hilson, who plays a young Beth, who's a character on it, I thought that she would be kind of an ideal Zora. Um, she just was really like light in life, but also very serious um, and responsible. And that was kind of the main cast, I guess I thought of. Um, other than that, I thought a lot about the look, the attitude, the attitude of the characters, but uh, not too much casting, no. Okay, our next question is going to come from Ms. Curry. Claire, great job. I remember you starting to talk about this last year, so it's so great to see it come to fruition. Um, I know that capstone is a real lot of work, but the question is, what was the most enjoyable thing you experienced in doing this capstone? Because I certainly hope there was a lot of enjoyable stuff that you got out of it. Yeah, uh, certainly. I, I think... I love developing characters. I've actually done it since I was very little. Um, I've always found kind of the little intricacies and quirks of people to be exciting and something that I wish I could have shared in my uh, final presentation, but I'll talk about now is as I began developing characters with my character chart, I found that not only was I answering questions like favorite music, I would almost answer it from the point of view of the character where instead of saying pop, I would say uh, pop music because I remember being with 
uh, my grandparents at a barbecue, listening to pop music, being with my cousins. And this isn't my experience. It would just be something that I would come up with and it felt natural for that character. So it almost felt like um, being able to develop characters and develop their world helped me with just giving these characters a voice and it almost unlocked my own creativity. And I think that that kind of, when I was able to do that, it kind of felt like I was flying and that was the best part of the experience for sure. Okay, the next question um, comes from Brooke. Yeah, so I was wondering after doing all this, writing your screenplay and everything, do you think you'd want I know you said you want to edit this one a little bit more, but do you think you'd want to write another one in the future? Yeah, I actually already have a couple of ideas. Um, I was, I'm still working on this one, but sometimes it's actually good to put it down and look at something else. And I wanted to do something more like a biopic and a biopic is just something that is specifically about one character. Um, so a famous biopic would be The Queen's Gambit. Um, another one that that's a television show, another one that is a, a feature length would be Steve Jobs. Um, and I was kind of interested in Joan Crawford because she's from early Hollywood and she's self-made. And she, I, I, I was interested in the idea because she designed herself in a way. She changed her name. She became the person that she thought she wanted to be. So I want to do more research and, and possibly write a biopic about her. Okay, we have probably time for one more question, if there is another question. Okay, otherwise, um, we're going to take a break for a moment. Um, Brooke Schmelz will be presenting um, at 9.10 on the evolving states of aerodynamics and sustainability. Um, but if you're, in if you're interested in reading anyone's capstone, what I'm hoping to do is eventually get all their videos online and their final capstone projects, because I know you've heard a little bit about Claire's script. Um, and if you're interested in reading it, it's a fantastic screenplay. Um, that will be available to you in the next week once we make, sh make sure everything is properly formatted. Um, as of right now, I'm going to stop this recording so that I can start a fresh recording for Brooke's, uh, Brooke's presentation. And that will be in about eight minutes. I hope you can all stay on and um, listen to her presentation about aerodynamics. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Claire. Thank you.